Hey, it's great to have you here today. I got an awesome drill for you. I'm joined with certified top speed golf instructor, Ronnie Snowden, and we're gonna do the hockey stick drill, which just cures so many things in your golf swing. All right, so let's jump into it first. Let's go ahead and do a split grip, just like you would do with hockey. Grip up on this hockey stick, maybe about a foot or so between your hands, something like that. And then, I don't play hockey. I didn't know what I was getting when I bought a hockey stick. I just clicked on whatever I saw on Amazon. It's a left-handed hockey stick, I know. You don't have to post it in your comments. Last time I did a video of this, I got like 400 comments on how it's a left-handed hockey stick. But uh, take it to the top of the swing here. And the biggest thing, if we're gonna shallow out this club, is this right hand has to be on this side of the left hand. If we start to get that club steep, now all of a sudden the right hand gets on top of the left hand. That's not where you wanna be. So we're gonna be steep here. We're gonna focus on rotating our shoulders to go even a little bit more with the shoulder turn in the back swing. So go ahead and go all the way to the top here. So get this good shoulder turn as you rotate to the back. That's gonna get you the power. Now, now the second step here, we're gonna stop last parallel. So that's when the club shaft or this hockey stick in this example is parallel with the ground in the downswing. And from here, what we'd like to have somewhere around, you know, a hand width or a little bit more away from your legs is where your hands are gonna be. And if you're straight with the hockey stick, meaning that if we shot a laser out of this and it's going toward the target or parallel with the target, that's gonna actually be a little bit too much of a fade swing. Most people don't know this, but if you're gonna hit a fade or a power fade like they do on tour, even when you hit a fade, this club at last parallel is gonna be a little bit inside. A draw is gonna be a little bit more inside. And the reason for that is that even if I'm gonna hit a fade from here, this club's from the inside, as he rotates his body back up into the left, you're gonna get the path going more to the left if you wanna hit a fade, and you're gonna be able to still hit a cut from the inside there. So feel like you get from here and then what I want you to feel is everything turns out of the way and you're gonna hit a fade. So basically all you're doing is turning a little extra to hit the fade. And if you wanna hit a draw, the only difference you do, still from the inside, but turn toward the target. So everything still rotates back in through there, turns back up into the left, but now it's a little bit more inside out. So when that club is to the inside, as you rotate, it gets slung out with momentum. And that's the advantage of this drill is that all I have to do is open up and the club gets slung out. I don't have to kind of manipulate it and throw it out there, if that makes sense. So step number two, let's do the exact same thing with a golf club here. Okay. For this one, all you're gonna do, grip down on the end of the club to where your thumb's on the shaft. We'll do the exact same checkpoints. So there's, he goes to the top of the swing. He's gonna focus on this hand being on that side of his left hand, his right hand. He's gonna get a fairly good shoulder turn. And I like this where he's keeping a little bit of width out away from his body. So if we start to fold this in, go ahead and let the hands fold, that's that swing where we just all arms, no shoulder turn, and, and too, way too much hands. Yeah. Keep this almost like if I kept your chest there and I pulled this as far as I could, that's what you want to feel like. It's going to be about a three-quarter back swing, but this is going to get the right technique, the right motion. Go down to the last parallel and have the club to the inside. And then from here, again, if I wanted to hit that power fade, I'm thinking about going from here, as I rotate back into the left, the club's actually gonna move to the left and be a slightly left um, path as it's coming through here. So he's gonna be rotating more. That's a power fade. If you've always wondered how to hit the power fade, the reason people struggle with the fade is the club is out here already, and that's gonna be too much of a glancing blow. If I wanna hit a draw, I do the same thing. I just don't go quite as much to the left. I rotate my body and clear it, and I'm gonna hit a little bit more of a draw from there. Now the last thing I wanna think about is the club face. I don't wanna hold it straight. So as it goes on through, I wanna go ahead and let that release. And just like you did here, turn that toe over so that it's not being held open like this. So if this was a hockey stick, again, imagine this is a right-handed hockey stick. It's turning on over like that. I don't wanna have the face being open like this or it's gonna be a block to the right or a glancing blow. So once you get that, you just you know, let that go ahead and release as you turn more left. Then the final step is there, you don't have to do anything different. You just put both your hands together and have the exact same feel as you're hitting a shot and you're gonna have some really, really good technique. Anything on there, Ronnie, that you see your students that maybe struggle with or anything that pops out to you? Well, the, the one thing you mentioned is about the, the, you know, getting the width with your arms, okay? When, when my students, a lot of times I'll see them have a lot of 
bend in their elbows. And when they're doing that, they're, they're bringing the club back faster and they're not getting as much rota rotation with their shoulders, their hips. You know, getting that, that width away from their body, it really helps with rotation, it really helps with a lot of effortless distance. Yeah, it feels like, well, I have to rotate my body more in the backswing, it's gonna be a lot more effort. But in reality, it's less effort for the club head speed that you're gonna get. So you just don't have to feel super strained, just go ahead and turn your entire body. A lot of times people will try to get their lower body locked, they're trying to stretch, 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 and they can't really make it. Go ahead and let the lower body turn and you can easily get back there. And if you start to feel super tight, just stop right there. Go a little short of that even. So if it's a half backswing for you, that's totally fine. Just stop there, that's where you should be stopping based on your flexibility. All right, so the next thing I want you to do, we did this with an iron. Let's keep these same concepts. Let's go ahead and learn to hit the driver absolutely the best that we can. Long and straight, everybody wants to do it. I have the three best tips for hitting great drives. It's one of my most popular videos. There's gonna be a picture of it that pops up on the right side of your screen. All you need to do is click on that, and I wanna share with you those secrets. I know you're gonna love them. So thanks to Ronnie. I can't wait to hear about your great success. See you soon.